Hello everyone, welcome to DIY Design by CCW. Thank you so much for tuning in and I hope you're having a great day. Well, you see all of these things on my desk. You know what this means. I'm going to be doing a DIY for you. Now, I've got tons of Dollar Tree stuff here. We've got these Dollar Tree candle bases. We've got boxes and containers of these Dollar Tree votive holders. I've also got some of these Dollar Tree napkin rings. Let me move them out here so that you can uh, see them. These are just the regular silver uh, Dollar Tree napkin rings. I've also got a few thrifted pieces out here. These are some Dollar Tree spray bottles. Uh, there I have the Krylon looking glass paint that we'll also be using. And uh, I've also got, of course, scissors and other tools. Um, now we've also got th some thrifted items such as this uh, thrifted vase as well as another uh, thrifted vase that we're going to be working with. And I'm going to be putting together some uh, Dollar Tree candle holders and uh, some other pieces. Now also, um, for, for those of you that let me know about the audio in my most recent video, thank you so much for that. Um, in that video, I was sharing with you guys the process for doing uh, the mercury glass look and some of you couldn't hear the instructions. So we're gonna do a little bit of the mercury glass treatment in this video as well. And, uh, but before we get into that, uh, I'm going to go ahead and get these pieces cleaned up. And uh, I don't always show this, but I usually, I wash pe my pieces, but I also use, especially in today's day and age, with everything we've got going on. I also use Clorox wipes to wipe everything down. I uh, wipe them out, I dry them before I do, you know, any prep work. So once I do that, I'm gonna take all of these pieces down into my garage where I can have some uh, ventilation and then we'll go ahead and we'll start the painting process. All right, guys, so now we're going to move on and I'll begin the process of doing the uh, mercury uh, glass treatment. So I'm starting by spritzing the looking glass spray uh, inside of each of my pieces. Now you're going to get a few drips and, and whatnot uh, when you spray this. Don't worry about that. Uh, that's not going to affect the finish of it. I'm just turning the piece, as you can see, so that I can get uh, the best coverage possible for this fo first uh, coat. Now, you're going to notice here that I'm actually spraying all of the Dollar Tree votive holders. Um, and I'll tell you once we begin, once we get into that, but I end up changing my mind about doing those in Mercury. Now here you have, you see that I have my Dollar Tree spray bottle. Uh, it's been filled with 50% vinegar, 50% water. Um, I will tell you, you probably could do this with all water and it would work. Um, I've seen that before, but I am using the traditional vinegar and water process here. So once I've sprayed it, my paint, then I wanna immediately come in and start to spray uh, the same surface with the vinegar and water solution. Now, as you can see, I'm turning the larger pieces upside down so that the solution will sort of run out and even out. Um, and now I'm going to come back and do a second coating. Following the same steps, I'm going to spray the inside again really good, really thoroughly with the looking glass paint. Uh, and there you see I'm turning it upside down after I sprayed it. I just want to even out the coverage a little bit. Uh, then I'll come back again and spritz it with a little more of the water. Then I'm doing that again with the other pieces following the same steps. And then again, I'll spritz them again uh, with the uh, vinegar and water solution. Now you can do this as many times as you want until you feel like you have the finish that you want. Um, and you probably want to let the coats uh, dry a little bit in between and uh, that way you'll kind of see what the finished look is going to be like and um, 
once you're done, let everything dry completely. And uh, then, you know, the process is done. I believe I did this maybe three times. There you see me spritzing. I'm sorry if I'm out of camera, the camera shot a little bit. Uh, I'm spritzing these pieces, the larger pieces, one more time with the vinegar and water solution. Then I'm going to turn them upside down. Uh, again, I come back after this and do this one more time, and then my pieces will be done and we'll be ready to move on. All right, so now uh, that the pieces have dried, I'm back in my office and we're going to begin adding some embellishment to the pieces. So I'm going to start with the first jar uh, here. And guys, I kept it pretty simple because, again, although I do want to add some bling, I wanted the mercury finish to show through. So here you just see me using some uh, fabric trim and this is a fabric trim you've seen me work with before around the bottom uh, of my uh, jar and uh, also I'll take that same fabric trim and add it around the neck of the jar. Now uh, I think this piece was a little short uh, and I had to end up adding another little piece to make it fit but it all worked out in the end. Uh, yeah, in fact, I see that I'm doing that now. And uh, guys, if you don't know, many times I work with some of my scraps and I try to use them all. So uh, in here, this was a piece where I had a scrap of leftover, some leftover bling wrap or fabric trim, and I'm using it for this piece. Um, now here's a closer uh, look or a closer up angle so that you are close angle i can't talk today so that you can see uh, what i'm doing so the next thing i'm going to be doing something that you may have seen me do in other videos i like to add a focal point to all of my pieces and i'm doing that with these brooches that again come from joanne fabrics i'm just going to apply some hot glue as well as a little e6000 quick hold to my piece and uh that's how it turned out. All right, so now uh, I'm coming back and adding just a little bit more of the hot glue because I saw that it wasn't quite uh, attached or, you know, was a little bit loose. And then I'm going to add a little more fabric trim around the rim of my piece. And the reason I'm adding that fabric trim around the rim is I want to make sure um, that when I make my lid, and you guys know if you follow my channel, I'm going to make a lid for this thing so that I can use it for storage as well as a decorative vase. Um, I want to make sure that the lid sits properly um, and it does make it fit better when I apply a little bit of uh, the rhinestone trim around the edge or the, the lip of uh, the piece. So I'll let you watch me do that part and then I'll come back when we move on to the next piece. Guys, I'm back and we're now gonna work on the second piece and uh, we're going to see how it turns out. I'm planning to add a base to this piece to give it a little more height, um, a little crystal base that I have found, a little thrifted uh, vase, and I decided not to spray or treat the vase, or the base rather, that I'm going to use. So here I'm going to use some of the same fabric trim that I used on the first piece. Uh, there you see me placing it around the bottom, and um, once I get that secured, then I'll add another piece around the top or the lid. And uh, I'm probably going to do the same thing uh, in terms of adding the focal point to the front of the piece. Now, again, these brooches that you see me using, uh, I buy all of these from Joanne Fabric. I love that they come uh, connected and sometimes I will use them that way connected as I'm doing now, but you can also separate them and use them in uh, different projects when you just want that little pop of bling. So here uh, I'm playing with a couple of different uh, 
ways that I'm going to do the lid and how I'm going to finish off the top so that I make sure that I get my fabric trim in just the right place. And um, once I do that, uh, I'll go ahead and attach everything to the base and uh, I'll come back when um, I get to the next part of the DIY. But before I do that, I do want to say something that I didn't earlier when we were doing the, or when I was demonstrating the mercury uh, painting technique or the mercury glass technique for you. Guys, if you do anything like this and you decide you want to do it, let me say, please make sure that you wear a mask and safety goggles. Um, the uh, spray from the, you know, you know, of course, anytime you spray paint anything, you should be wearing a mask, but also make sure that you do it in a ventilated area. You've got to be safe and you've got to protect your lungs. So again, guys, this is the close-up shot so that you can uh, take a closer look at what I'm doing. And um, there I'm turning the piece on its side so that I can attach, you know, the, the focal point. And uh, I'm just going to glue that on with a little hot glue and a little E6000 quick hold. And again, then I'll attach the base and I'll be back for the next part of the DIY. guys so here you're just going to see me making uh, one of the lids uh, for my two uh, mercury uh, uh, storage pieces and now I'm going to use this same method for both lids so I'm only going to show you the one uh, but basically I'm just using a cutting board I'm going to apply a mirror to both sides of the cutting board rather than using uh, glitter paper, which I do use sometimes. Uh, now, the for the one piece, I'm using, <clears throat> excuse me, five inch mirrors. And uh, for the smaller lid, I will be using a four inch mirror. But other than that, the process will be the same. Um, now, I'll add a little bit of rhinestone fabric trim around uh, the mirror once I put it all together and then I'll go ahead and apply my crystal knob and uh, the crystal knob that I'm going to use is going to be a little different than what you've seen uh, before again I buy these knobs from home goods and uh, they have different shapes and styles so these knobs are more glass uh, knobs than the crystal look a uh, little bit different shape but I wanted to try something different, uh, like I said, and I hope you like them, but let me know what you think down in the description box. All right, guys, so that's all for this part, and I'll be back in a second or two to talk to you about making the Dollar Tree candle holders. So now I'm going to begin to put together the Dollar Tree candle holders for you. Now, if you'll see um, in the first part of this video, when I was doing putting these together, I had spray painted these and was going to do the mercury trim, but I decided or mercury uh, finish. I decided I didn't like that for for the candle holders, so I used them. I cleaned away the paint, and I, it was easy to do. I just used a little hot soapy water, and I was able to do that. So now, how these are put together? You want to start with the candle base, and as you can see, the first thing I did was glue on uh, the Dollar Tree napkin ring. Then you want to start to assemble. The other pieces and basically what I'm doing here uh, is I've glued two of the, the votives together and uh, once I do that I'm going to go ahead and attach a little bit of fabric trim uh, around the votive just to hide first of all to add a little bit of bling but also to, ha to hide 
where I glued them together. And I'm going to repeat that process and add a couple more like this until I get the, uh, the uh, candle holder to the height that I want. So here you see I'm adding another napkin holder and um, I'm going to do that in between each section. I'll uh, glue on a napkin holder, then I'll put together another piece, uh, or rather glue together two more of the candle holders, and then I'll just keep doing that. And again, you can make this as tall as you want, but just remember if it's too tall, it might not be stable. So uh, I go up as high as I think I can and uh, keep it stable. And um, so you'll see me continue to do that. And then each section, I'm gonna come back and cover each little uh, section or joint with the uh, fabric trim. And uh, just to make sure again that I have the bling that I want and uh, also that it looks neat and we're in so that you're not able to see where I glued the pieces together. So now that I've stacked all of my votive holders and napkin rings uh, and added all of the embellishment that I wanted to add there, I'm going to add, uh, for stability, I'm going to add a one of these glass uh, Dollar Tree candle plates to the bottom uh, of my candle holder. And I'll also glue one to the top and that's where I would place my candles. Now, of course, I've got to add just a little bit more embellishment 
uh, to the bottom here. And basically I'm just using some more of this rhinestone trim. Uh, again, I, that information will be down in my description box. And this is trim that you see me use all the time. And I'll just glue it around uh, the base to add that little bit of extra, uh, you know, decorative pop. And uh, as I said, then I'll glue this same uh, glass candle holder on the top and uh, this piece will be finished. So hang on because after this, it'll be time for the final reveal. Right, everyone and this is how everything turned out this is the finished look and I think I do like these pieces now that's a close-up of one of the storage uh, decanters there's a close-up of one of the tower candle holders there's a close-up of the other uh, the jar container and let's take a closer look at everything you know what, guys? I do like them. Like I said, I think I like these pieces. Um, I do like that center piece. In fact, I'm probably going to go and change out my dresser yet again and, and use this piece that's in the middle. Now, I like the way these Dollar Tree candle holders turned out uh, as well. I One of you had asked me a few weeks back if I could make a taller uh, set of uh, candle holders and uh, I think these fit the bill as a taller set. I do like them. I also like that they're made out of all Dollar Tree pieces. I think, um, let's see, one, two, th these cost maybe three dollars to make. Yeah, maybe three dollars and I will be using them in a tablescape very soon. Um, Again, really like them. So now there's a close-up again of the one container. You know what? I love that mercury look. Uh, I wanted to make a couple more pieces using that mercury technique so that, of course, I would have a complete set, but I do like the mercury look. And again, another look at the uh, detail work on the centerpiece and I do like the different shape of the crystal knobs, um, something different. And uh, you guys let me know what you think. Those are just the glass knobs, but I think they work as well. And um, all right, now I'm going to show you here, like I always do, pieces I've done in another video. Those two decanters in the front were the first uh, Mercury pieces I did. That face in the corner there is one of my favorite uh, DIYs. I'll make sure to link that down in the description box. Also, that vase uh, was the first Mercury vase that I did. Again, that video will be linked in the description box. Those pieces, those storage jars come with or were created with the vase that you just saw. Again, I love those pieces, love that color. There's another vase that was done uh, not too long ago that you might recognize. And this little decanter goes again with that set in the back. Now, and guys, well, if you're not a member of the channel, I really hope that you'll consider subscribing today. I would love to have you be a family member. If you like this kind of DIY, then this is the place for you. Also, if you would, please visit my other channel, which is, which is Tablescapes by Candy. And there you can see uh, me do tablescapes using a lot of the pieces that I create on this channel.
So that's all I have for you today, guys. As always, I thank you so much for tuning in. And like I say, at the end of every single video, I can't wait to see you, each and every one of you, in the next video. All right, everyone. Have a wonderful day or a wonderful night. Bye-bye.